Welcome to This Week in Missouri Politics. Very special edition this week. We're going to give you excerpts from the Congressional District 4 debate we held in, at Warrensburg, the campus of University of Central Missouri. Myself, Mike Mahoney, Austin Peterson asked all four top candidates questions ranging from uh, the transgender issues, abortion issues. But the first was from Mike Mahoney about who are you going to vote for in this U.S. Senate primary? Michael and folks of the 2nd or 4th Congressional District, I am so concerned right now about winning each day in this race for rural Missouri to be your strongest, loudest, most consistent voice. I really don't have time to pay attention to what's going on in the Senate race or for any race for that matter. I am going to vote. I have not decided. I need to do my research just like everyone else in this race and is watching now needs to do their research to make sure that the strongest candidate who has the best possibility of beating the Democrat in this race takes home the prize on August 2nd. I too am focused on my own uh, race and, and trying to be the, the conservative choice for the 4th Congressional District. Uh, there are 15 or, or 16 candidates on that, that Senate primary, and I, I believe it's up for the people of the 4th to decide for themselves and not allow me to sway their vote. Uh, but the way you vote, sir, four out of five Republicans that are likely to, to uh, cast a vote in this race are saying they've made up their mind. Have you? You're telling me you're among that one of five that have not? I am one of the five that I haven't made up my mind of, of who I'm going to vote for in this race. So, and, and I do believe it's a disservice for me to sway people's vote on, and let them be the educated. That's the whole purpose of us doing this debate, because we need to be the, the, to let them know who we are. They need to let them know who they are and what they will represent. Not me cloud their judgment because they support me, they're going to support somebody else that they may not uh, otherwise support. Ms. Bruce? Uh, well, I'm happy to give the non-political answer. Um, I'm voting for Congresswoman Vicki Hartzler. She's a strong, rural, conservative voice for us currently in the House. Agriculture is Missouri's number one industry. She goes home to the farm every week after she leaves D.C. We need somebody who understands farming, ranching, and the rural way of life to protect that rural way of life that is constantly under attack, certainly right now in the Biden administration. So for me and my family, we are strong Congressman Vicki Hartzler supporters, and we're glad to cast that vote on August 2nd. Mr. Bruce? Uh, you know, I'm one of those guys that wants to see our U.S. Senate candidates debate. And I've narrowed it down to two. I would say Congresswoman Hartzler and Attorney General Schmidt are the two that I'm weighing. But if they are unwilling to get on a debate stage and answer tough questions with each other, it's not going to get easier in Washington, D.C. And so I would call on our top U.S. Senate candidates to do what we're doing here tonight. Answer, vote, or answer questions from the media, whether they're friendly or tough questions. Answer questions from voters and talk about what they believe so that we can see them and make up our own mind like we're doing here tonight. The next question we have was from Austin Peterson. He asked about the relationship with immigration and inflation, and would you ease immigration standards in order to lower inflation? It has nothing to do with, with the, the wave of, of immigrants coming here illegally. It has everything to do with a reckless, out-of-control government that is spending money, not budgeting. They're not looking at, at what they're spending. They're spending 10 times more than what they're bringing in. That's, that's just a, a, you know, I'm just saying it's not 10 times, but they are spending so much, it's reckless, and it's going to topple America. So that is exactly what, what the problem is. It's our debt, and it's our spending, and it's our lack of capability to actually budget. Many people don't even realize that, that the Congressional uh, Congress in, in D.C. have not even budget, budgeted since before Barack Obama was president. They continue to do continuing resolutions, continuing the crazy spending out of control, you know, recklessness that has led to this Biden inflation. So, Not to mention the spending bills that continue to occur, that, that continue the printing that has led to this. So in the 1980s, one of the strategies that Ronald Reagan implemented in order to bring down inflation that had been suffering through the Carter years, the stagflation, was the Bracero program, which was to allow them to have temporary worker visas, and that was an inflation-fighting strategy. You think that the Reagan strategy was the wrong move? I think that the move needs to be looking at our spending and our budgeting. That is what we're at thirty trillion dollars in debt. I hardly think an, an influx and a, a, a pouring of, of illegal immigrants into our nation is the answer. Ms. Bruce. I believe that uh, the labor issue as well as the immigration issue is a major issue for us here um, in the United States. The, specifically the immigration uh, issue, immigration reform has been kicked uh, down the road by Congress after Congress, and I believe that that needs to be focused on in the 118th Congress. Farmers, ranchers, um, manufacturers, 
we need a reliable workforce. We need um, the migrant workforce that is used to doing those jobs because there are a lot of those jobs that Americans simply don't want to do. Um, we need that. We need uh, uh, H-2A and an H-2B program that has less red tape. We need um, folks that, uh, that have been in our country for generations. They need a path to citizenship. But at the end of the day, we have to close the borders. We have to secure our farms, ranches, and businesses there on the borders. And then we have to cut back our spending. Senator Bratton is exactly right. We have put so much money, flooded our economy with money in the last four years, mostly due to COVID. And we have got to stop that. That is what's causing inflation is the, the money that we're spending and overspending in Congress. So it's a two-pronged question, absolutely, but there's not gonna be one answer to fix the inflation issue. But I do believe immigration reform has to happen. Mr. Burks. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting point. I'm the only candidate on the stage who hasn't taken federal handouts that kicked off the inflation that we're seeing. When we saw trillions of dollars spent in PPP and government handouts over the last three years, you need a congressman who's gonna to go to Washington, D.C. and fight for fiscal conservatism. That's what I did in the Boone County Clerk's Office, saving half a million dollars in the two years that I was in that office. But people can talk a big game while they're standing up here or in Jefferson City or in front of cameras. We need people who have proven that they will fight for the things that we care about. I care about fiscal conservatism. I care about our national security. I care about securing our borders. And those are the things that we have to do to get this country back on the right fiscal track. Ms. Bruce, you'd like to respond? I would. So I don't believe that uh, PPP programs were government handouts to small businesses who were trying to stay afloat and keep their employees uh, working. My job as a small business owner is to make sure that I take care of my employees and their families, and I do so, and I take that, um, that responsibility very much to heart. So uh, the PPP program did what it was intended to do. It kept small businesses afloat. It kept those employees at work, and I, am, uh, I think that that program was essential in making sure small business, specifically in rural America, could stay afloat when our government, specifically the Biden administration, shut us down. Mr. Oliver? Ladies and gentlemen, I feel strongly that the person who is the, who is the most proven in this is the person who's actually been to the border to see the crisis firsthand. Kalina's done that. I've done that. It's only a 13-hour drive from here to the border with Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a crisis at the border, and television does not portray it adequately. We drove from Del Rio to Eagle Pass and saw countless numbers of illegal aliens crossing without any resistance from our border patrol. The Texas Border Patrol and the Texas uh, State Police are trying to do all they can, but we've got to finish President Trump's wall. We must deport illegal aliens. And no, we have enough jobs here in America for Americans to fill, and we need to stop paying people to stay at home and not work so those positions can be filled so we can get our nation back on track. Senator Bratton, did you want to speak? I do. Uh well, I'm, I'm glad Mr. Alford went to the, the wall and stood in front of a wall, but, but I've actually had a business that had to deal with illegal immigration crushing my industry. That's why I ran for office, and I uh, offered E-Verify <laughs> penalties for these sanctuary cities to ensure that they were penalized if they had those sort of policies and, and many other uh, things to address the actual problem. So it's one thing to go stand in front of a wall and give a speech in front of a camera. It's a whole other to be fighting the fight and have been fighting the fight as I have at our state capitol. Uh, time for our third question. I'm going to ask it. Every, every Republican I know running for office loves Donald Trump and all his accomplishments. But, Ms. Bruce, we'll start with you. What is something, if you were in Congress, you couldn't, really couldn't have brought yourself to support that President Trump did? I appreciate that question. Um, as a conservative Republican, um, and, and a farming family, we, you know, we helped put President Trump in office. And we uh, were not very appreciative of the, the tariffs that got handed out that were crushing to agriculture. Now, I'm not saying that uh, China didn't need to be put in check, because absolutely, China needs to be put in check. And I realize that tariffs were a way for that administration to do so and do so swiftly. However, we always have to look back to how that's affecting us here at home and to the backbone of our country, and that is our farmers and our ranchers and our rural communities. And so I believe, um, as a congresswoman at that time, I would have given the advice of, let's take a different, broader look at this. Let's see if maybe we could put 
the TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, back on the table. It was a way for us to completely cut China out and work with other countries specifically. And so that would have been the, the path that I would have advised President Trump to do. And I think that he appreciated the fact that I stood up for farmers and ranchers as part of the American Farm Bureau Young Farmer and Rancher Committee. He asked me then to work on the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act after I specifically said this is not good for us here at home. Mr. Burks? Yeah, that's the struggle. Uh, with a complicated world we live in. You can't have a single point of view. I actually support the tariffs and I grew up on my family's farm. My family continues to have agriculture businesses and the reality is a bigger threat to us today wasn't the tariffs that we placed on foreign countries like China, uh, uh, trade cheats like China. The bigger threat to us is China itself. And President Trump has been the only one who's had the backbone to stand up and fight China where it actually hurts, our agriculture imports. And we did a lot to protect and serve farmers under the Trump administration. Where I disagree with President Trump is the start of this spending that we've seen today, and we're seeing double-digit inflation because of it. I talked about PPP. I talked about the handouts that we've seen from the federal government for years now. President Trump was one of those who started the process of spending money to try to save the economy. We have to be concerned about what my kids are inheriting from, from us, what this economy looks like, not just in the next few months, not just in the next administration, but in the next generation. And we've started to destroy it with terrible fiscal policy. And so I ask for people's support because I'm a fiscal conservative in that regard. Mr. Alford. Scott, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, had I been President Trump in that <coughs> Oval Office on the first day, I would have fired the FBI Director James Comey. I think that is one of the only mistakes that President Trump has made, because James Comey, along with Hillary Clinton creating the Russian hoax, took down this president. This president would still be president had it not been for that Russian hoax that the FBI Director James Comey promulgated and kept going and going and going. And ladies and gentlemen, the truth is going to come out eventually. When we take back the House this November and get into power in January, the investigations will begin. We are driving the Democrats out of power. We will investigate that. We will investigate Hunter Biden's laptop and how much money the big guy really got from foreign governments like China. We will also investigate other things that have like COVID, the true origins of COVID and Anthony Fauci's involvement or lack of involvement. But the truth is coming, folks, and I'm going to be a part of it. Senator Breton. Well, that's a, that's a tough one because President Trump has been one of the very first presidents that has been such a breath of fresh air that he comes in, has an America first agenda, willing to, to fight against the illegal immigration onslaught that, that was plaguing this land, building the wall, taking on the swamp. Uh, the, uh, the strength, peace through strength aspect that he had but also the, the willingness for him to, to realize the, the war in Iraq, you know, was something that we had to, to draw back and, and he was successful in that. The fact that he was willing and, and going to be successful with the drawback in Afghanistan. Unfortunately, we saw a traitor-esque uh, approach to uh, Afghanistan through the uh, Biden administration that, that knee-jerk reacted and killed innocent Americans. But our president uh, has been a, a strong advocate for America, something that had been lacking for so long. So that's a very difficult one to, to even really uh, come up with because he was such a strong uh, um, a patriot for America. I mean, building an economy that was booming beyond anything we had ever seen in as America. So I would say uh, the, the most difficult thing would be probably the, the, the tariff aspect would be the one thing, being a free market uh, conservative would be the, the thing that I disagreed most with. Next, we're going to move on to the portion of the debate where you get a single question for each candidate. We'll start with you, uh, Mr. Mahoney, asking Senator Bratton a question. Yeah, um, Senator, uh, you voted against the uh, phased-in Missouri gas tax that uh, went through the state Senate a year ago. You're very proud of it. You're nodding your head as we, as we speak here. How do you feel about um, um, the, at the federal level, would you support the suspension of, uh, of the federal tax on fuel and, ga and, and gasoline here? And how do you think the United States, since uh, uh, the administration right now is in the Mideast, should be dealing with Saudi Arabia and the kingdom there as it relates to, uh, number one, being a major global supplier of oil and also its human rights records? So it's a two-part question there. Well, drill here, drill now. Uh, I mean, we have to tap into our American resources God has blessed us with. 
We are a fossil fuel-based economy. We live, breathe, and, and exist upon diesel. And, and that is an absolute fact. And the fact that this administration has came in and eviscerated that day one he took office is egregious. And it's an attack on every single American. Now, what, would, I, would I support the, the doing away with the, the federal tax for a short amount of time? No. That's ridiculous. No, let's go and drill here, drill now. Uh, I'm for less, less taxes, but that's just a, a Band-Aid on an ar arterial uh, laceration to, to think we're going to, to help people out in, in an attempt like that. It's, it's lipstick on a pig is what that would be. So I was happy to support the, the, the no gas tax. We have billions of dollars in general revenue. We could have re-diverted to that. This year in the state budget, we had a $12 billion influx that we could have funded our, our roads completely. And, and we didn't do that. We just raised taxes on people. It's terrible. We'll be right back with part two of our debate and the closing statements after this. For more than a century, the St. Louis Carpenters Union has shaped our communities. Through trusted alliances, we deliver skilled professional craftspeople, while our business partners provide the kind of quality jobs that keep our economy humming. It's a blueprint that has worked since 1882. Turning Missouri into a right-to-work state stalls progress, wipes out jobs, and kills momentum. Right to work is wrong for everyone. Let's keep Missouri moving forward. Visit carpdc.org to learn more. Your energy needs are changing. That's why at Ameren, Missouri, we're not waiting on the future. We're building it with the Smart Energy Plan, advancing thousands of projects across the state, helping reduce emissions through cleaner energy sources, boost reliability with self-healing equipment, and better withstand storms with new composite poles. Moving Missouri forward and bringing us all a little closer together. That's energy at work, Ameren, Missouri. I'm Steve Roberts, and I'm running for Congress against Cori Bush. Our country is spinning out of control. High gas prices grow and children murdered in their schools. Now is the time to stand with President Biden, and I'll have his back, both in service and in Congress. I won't vote against the president just because I don't get everything I want. And together, we'll pass common sense gun laws and work to reform the police, not to fund them. I'm Steve Roberts, and I approve this message. I'm Eric Schmidt. As a sixth generation Missourian, it's always been about God, family, country, and the Cardinals for me. As your senator, I'll swing a big stick in Washington, crushing Biden's socialist agenda, stopping election fraud, and protecting the integrity of your vote securing our border, banning critical race theory, and keeping men out of girls' sports. I'm Eric Schmidt. I proved this message because I'll knock it out of the park for Missouri. We thought it was over. Missouri Republican Governor Eric Greitens has just resigned this afternoon. Scandal after scandal. Already facing a felony charge, now accused of a second felony. Now, there's more about Eric Greitens. Former Missouri governor is now accused of spousal abuse and intimidation. One of the boys had a swollen face saying his father had hit him. Scandals, felony charges, physical abuse allegations. That's not conservative. But it is the real Eric Greitens. Show Me Values Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. Austin Peterson from KWS Radio asks, would you po prosecute someone for having an abortion across state lines? And the closing statements. Uh, praise God the Supreme Court took this out of the hands of unelected judges and gave it back to policymakers so we can have this conversation. First and foremost, I think this is an issue that's more appropriately left to the state level. Uh, the federal government has no role in regulating who crosses state lines, issues like that. If something is criminalized at the state level, then the federal government can look at that. But uh, I think it's appropriate for the federal government to respect state level criminal codes. But beyond that, the federal government has no role in what this, this policy is beyond defunding Planned Parenthood, uh, beyond ensuring that Department of Defense facilities aren't used as safe havens for abortionists and protecting life at all costs in this country. Mr. Alford. I am 100% pro-life, always have been, always will be. And I am overcome with joy that the Supreme Court of the United States made the right constitutional decision to send this back to the states where it belongs. And I'm so thankful that Missouri has laws in place to protect life. This would not have happened though without President Trump and his choice of three conservative justices who had the 
moral fortitude to make the right decisions in tough times, even when people were protesting outside their homes in threat of danger, and our Department of Justice not doing anything about it to stop it. That's, that's a shame. Okay. People who are charged with enforcing laws, not even protecting our own justices. There are programs in place to help women who are, have faced this decision. I risk my own career at Fox 4 to help out organizations like Rachel's House and Independence, raising money for them, emceeing events, and supporting them. Because I believe in life. There are similar programs in Harrisonville that we're supporting, the Shiloh Center. I choose life. Would you vote for a federal law to prosecute women who cross state lines for an abortion? I would have to see the ballot language. I mean, it's, it's not a ballot language. It would be a bill that you would consider. I, I mean, it's a pretty direct the, question, I would, sir. I'm sorry. I would have to see the language of the bill before. It's still a pretty direct question. Senator Bratton. Well, there you go. You, you're not going to get a direct answer. So you'll get a direct answer out of me. I will absolutely emphatically support a bill that will penalize, especially the abor abortion provider, the one who's carrying out the egregious act. You know, there's a lot of women that will be uh, misled. So I don't think the, the proper avenue is to prosecute the woman. It's the one carrying out the evil act of murder upon an unborn child. I will absolutely emphatically support that. I supported and sponsored the Texas Heartbeat Bill here in Missouri, which gave a private cause of action for those, those people who are injured or carried across state lines. They can go after the, the abortion provider and sue them into oblivion. I think that's another approach, and I would be happy to sponsor that and make that a federal law to where you have that capability to literally bankrupt their rear ends. That's exactly what needs to happen. That's why I'm, I'm proud to be the only uh, endorsed candidate by Missouri Right to Life in this race. I have been on the front lines, tip of the spear, fighting for life. Uh, I, I was a part of the investigation that, that looked into the baby body parts being squandered and sold as commodity by these evil organizations. We have got to hold them to account, and I will do that and have done that. Uh, and that's why it's important to get a straight shooter, because you just heard a, a very typical political answer there. And, and we don't have time to deal with that here in Washington, what's at stake. Ms. Bruce. What a win for the pro-life leaders and for the children of America to have this case overturned, to put the power back to the states so that the people of, of the states can hold their elected officials accountable. I think it's the perfect place to have this discussion. However, as a mother, I cannot imagine having to be put in that position to, to make that choice. Um, I applaud the, the pregnancy resource centers and, and the funds that are getting diverted to, to those maternity homes and, and places where women can go and families can go um, to get counseling and, and, and make the right decision to protect life. Um, I agree with Senator Bratton that this is not something that we should be penalizing the women and the families for. Um, it is easy to be led astray in this world and there's a lot uh, going on whenever you're um, in a situation that you have to make such a profound choice. So we should definitely be holding accountable the doctors that are, are pro, uh, providing these services to women. They need to be um, you know, imprisoned. They need to be fined. They need everything. They need the book thrown at them. Life is, uh, life is so valuable and we have to do everything we can to protect it. Our closing statements will be 60 seconds and I'll start with you Mr. Alford. Thank you. Appreciate all, all of you who've been here. Thanks for our studio audience tonight and thank you for this great university for the opportunity. You know, I got into this race for one reason. I'm the only candidate in this race that's pretty much sacrificed everything to be here. Gave up a career, gave up the security, the money. But I'm here for a reason, folks. I'm here to be a voice for the people of the 4th Congressional District. The strongest, loudest, most consistent, unwavering voice. Before my dad died, he gave me this copy of the Constitution. It's underlined like the King James Bible. And I have studied it, and I'm going to follow it, because I'm going to swear an oath to it. It's so important that we use that as a basis for how we govern. And it's so important that we realize the true meaning of the House of Representatives is to represent the will of the people, not our own agenda, not our own egos. This is all about you. Thank you. Senator Bratton. Well, it's an honor to serve the four people of the 4th Congressional District. I live here, and I've represented the 4th Congressional District at our state house. So I know what's important to, to the people. And we see our freedoms and liberties under attack daily. 
You know, I, I not only know the Constitution, I have sworn oath to protect and defend the Constitution, and will do at all costs. The representative of the people, their job and mission is to protect the rights and liberties and freedoms of the individual. That is what it is. And you have my solemn vow that I will protect and defend liberty at all costs. We have an administration and the left that is looking to crash this American economy. They have waged war on your way of life, and they will do nothing to stop to destroy it. We are the last good hope standing in the way of their utopian communist manifesto. I assure you we have to send proven fighters to Washington. I'm not a career politician. I'm a patriot looking to fight for you and liberty and freedom at all costs. And I ask for your vote. Ms. Bruce. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight to talk about policy and talk about things that are important to the people of the 4th District. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a conservative Republican, fifth generation farmer, uh, CPA, living and working amongst all of you as well. And, and so I get it. I understand um, how prices are affecting you at home, how the government is just completely over-regulating our farms, our ranches, our small businesses until they just choke us out. And so it's going to be super important that you make a vote um, that will send some with your morals, your values, and who understands your way of life to Congress to protect it. We live in the greatest country there ever was. And we can be powerful and lose what makes us special. And so we are going to have to fight every day to make sure that we keep our rural way of life strong, that we protect our farmers, our ranchers, and our businesses that are the backbone of this country. Working families know how important it is um, to have someone who understands them uh, in elected positions. And so I'd ask for your support on August 2nd because I can be that person for you. Mr. Burks. I think we can do better. I think our families deserve better. I think this country deserves better from the people we send to Washington, D.C. I'm the only candidate up here who's fought for this country overseas where it counts. I'm the only candidate who has the experience on a number of the hot button issues facing our country today and was doing it before a seat for Congress opened up. I offer to take the work ethic that I learned on my family's farm. I offer to take the character that was refined in the United States Navy overseas and here at home and then my experience as a dad and a husband of a school teacher to Washington, D.C. and fight for the things that matter for us here in Missouri. I'm a fifth generation farm kid. I'm a 15 year Navy veteran. And I think that when we do better, when we send people to Washington, D.C. who don't just talk about the things that are important to us, not career politicians who have slick poll tested messages or media personalities that know exactly the right thing to say, I'm the candidate that has the experience to say it in Washington, D.C. and do it for the people of Missouri's fourth. Thank you for joining us for this very special edition of this week in Missouri politics. Hope you enjoyed the Congressional District 4 debate. Thank you to Mike Mahoney, Austin Peters, and everyone at UCM for hosting us. We'll see you next week on This Week in Missouri Politics. Support for this program has been provided by the Missouri Automobile Dealers Association, Ameren, Spire, and Sterling Bank. Mm -hmm.